picked up another Game Gear today, mainly because it was only ten dollars, and it came in this, uh, you know, bag, which I already have an official Sega Game Gear bag, but you know, for ten bucks, I couldn't pass it up. As the the power plug, and that's the price on it there. That's nine ninety nine. That was on the power plug in here, uh, and the Game Gear in very good shape. I already have a couple Game Gears, but uh, you know, <laughs> once again, it was the price, and it came with this one game. This game I hadn't had before. I have quite a bit of Game Gear games, but uh, I didn't have this one. And this is uh, Legend of Illusion, starring Mickey Mouse. All right, so let's check this out, shall we? As we can see, this game was uh, created in 1994. It was developed by Sega, like many of the Disney games. Um, and, you know, unlike Land of Illusion, uh, this was, uh, you know, basically a game for the Sega Master System and the Game Gear, as they basically port directly to each other. Now, as you can see, the colors are very good in this game, the graphics are very good in this game. This game came out for the Game Gear in 1995, so it is a fairly late Game Gear game, uh, but it's definitely a very good looking Game Gear game. So here's the title screen. Even the title screen looks decent. 1994, I'm guessing this came out for the Sega Master System first. So you can see I have a little bit of a map there. Uh, showing your level, and uh, and then you start playing, and uh, you know at first this seems like a, a basic platform game, but you know one thing I really like about this game is the emphasis on puzzle solving. There's actually a lot of puzzle solving in this game for uh, considering it's a platformer. I mean, you know, even right here, just figuring out that you need the barrel here to get up here. I mean, it's not a hard game. It's definitely, I think, a game uh, geared towards a younger audience. It's, it's difficulty is definitely not very high, um, but, uh, you know, it's the little puzzles that are fun. And, uh, you know, it plays uh, much like Castle of Illusion. There was all these of Illusion games with Mickey Mouse. I mean, there was uh, Castle of Illusion for the Sega Master System, and I'm pretty sure that got ported to the game here. There was also a Genesis version, and then there was Land of Illusion. Uh, on the uh, the Sega Master System and then ported to the Game Gear. And this was the final one, uh, Legend of Illusion, which once again I'm guessing was, uh, was came out on the Master System in 94, as we saw the copyright in 94, although I believe this game actually came out for the Game Gear in 95, so... Once again, I haven't seen the, the uh, Master System version, I'm just guessing. In between every level, there's a storyline that goes on with little cutscenes. Once again, uh, very good color and stuff on the Game Gear. Shows off the Game Gear's color palette, which is the one thing it's got on the Sega Master System. It does have a higher color palette. Once again, you know, it's a basic puzzle, I know, but it's, it's fun, you know? It's not just a typical platform game, you know? The, there wasn't really these kind of puzzles in Castle of Illusion that I really remember. You know, even just figuring out how to get up here. Kinda gotta jump as it's springing you up, get you up there. And you can grab onto the vines here to get across. And then these little monkey guys or whatever they are, help you. Well, when you do it right, they'll help you across. Jump from one monkey to the next. Now, I'll show you how to get a one-up. Uh, figured that branch is there for a reason. <laughs> and a springy thing. And I wanted to get up on the branch, and I'm like, what was the point of that? Oh, but there's vines here. Okay, ah. Oh, missed the vines. Uh, the controls are a little, little, little bit laggy. I don't want to complain. They're, they're not horrible, but there is, you know, a, s a fraction of a delay when you try and do two things at once. And this level's weird. It has, like, magnets in it, and there's, like, the north and the south poles of the magnets, and um, they'll attract each other. So that's sort of the puzzles in this level. 
is just getting the magnets together. As you can see here, and it pulls out the platform for you, which you use to get up. And then of course, you have to hold up to, to, to climb across the things, to get your way across there. And this level's beat. Like I said, not not necessarily a hard game, but it's definitely fun. Now, this was hard. I died on this boss so many times. Because if you don't know where he's coming from, you get hit. It's guaranteed you're going to get hit when you don't know where he's coming from. And I died, and I died, and I died. I couldn't figure it out. It's like, how come this game has seemed so easy, and now I can't beat this boss? Then I figured it out. There's three lights on each side, and the light bulbs flash. And where the light is, as opposed to the little block, creates the shadow, and of course you're fighting the shadow. So, there's three lights on each side, there's three possible ways he can come at you from each side. Once you figure it out, it's easy as pie. I thought that was a really cool puzzle. Once again, more cutscenes, great, great graphics, and back to the map. Yeah, I mean... Look at the graphics. I mean, I have to say, if this was a Genesis game, I wouldn't be complaining. Um, the very, very good graphics on the Game Gear when it can really show off the colors when it wants to. It has a Sega Master System mode. Some games may just use the same palette as the Sega Master System. Um, you know, but in this one, you can definitely tell they're using the, the full palette of the Game Gear. The colors are just awesome. And like I said, if this was a Genesis game, I wouldn't be complaining. <laughs> you know, it's... Other than the screen resolution, which is one reason I think this is a port from the game, or from the Master System, and that's often the... The one downside is when they port a game from the Master System to the Game Gear, you're on a lower resolution screen, so you don't actually see as much on the screen at a time. And the way this one pans up and down is a little bit annoying. <laughs> There's times when you can't see below you and you don't know if you're about to fall into a pit or if there's going to be something down there. <laughs> and I would think on the Master System version you would see that. So, I mean, that's one small downside to the game. Um, and the controls, like I said, it's mainly when you need to do two things at once. When you need to pick something up, you need to walk into it and press, uh, I believe it's button two, at the same time and you kind of have to walk into it and wait a second before you hit the button. It's it's just like a fraction of a second, and um, it doesn't seem to affect the platforming too much, because it's only when you need to do two things at once, which is like to pick something up or grab a ladder or something. Um, just jumping alone uh, seems to be fine, and the controls are fine on the D-pad. Um, so, I mean, it probably won't get you killed or anything, but... Just when you need to, th to pick something up or um, grab a ladder, sometimes uh, you got to give it a second ahead of time. Um, you know, this has some cool puzzles with these prisms, and I couldn't figure out what I was supposed to do with the prism until I thought, oh, well, yeah, we'll reflect the light with it. <laughs> and uh, so, I guess this, is a, this is a pretty good game. Um, This was ported to the Saturn, of all things, uh, along with Quackshot on, like, a single disc. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I'm running out of time. And uh, I'll see you later.